So there's two ways of specifying the direction of a vector in 3D space in statics. One way is the direction angles, the alpha, beta, and gamma. That's one way of completely defining which way a vector is pointing in 3D space. Now the other way is this double projection technique. And a lot of teachers may throw this at you and just say, oh yes, if you, if you see something like this, you use this. You can really understand where this comes from. And if you really understand the trigonometry of it, you can just, you don't even have to memorize this. You can just, you know, find the components on your own just by using right triangle trigonometry. So it's all about just focusing on right triangles. And here's a right triangle right here. Here's the right angle. And here's the hypotenuse, and it's 80. That's the magnitude, the length of this force. And you can see that we can easily figure out this opposite right here. It's going to be the opposite side of this 30 degree angle. And notice that this is going to be the z component. That's going to be fz right there. We can easily do a sine statement to figure that out. The sine of 30 degrees equals the opposite, that fz, divided by the hypotenuse, that 80. And if we rearrange, we can easily figure out that the fz is 40 pounds. All right, so we got that. So let's continue to work this right triangle. The next line is the adjacent here, this one. But notice that this is not the x or the y component. This black line here is not going completely in the x direction or in the y direction. In a sense, it's going in both directions, the x and the y. And it's not going in the z at all. So this is what is known as the the double projection, because it, in a sense, has two components in it. It has the x here and the y here. But the double projection itself is not a component. So here's fx, here is fy. So let's figure out the length of that adjacent side, that double component. So the cosine of 30 degrees will equal the double projection dp over that same hypotenuse. We're still working with that that top triangle, that triangle that's sort of standing up. Of course we can do the math. 69.3 pounds there. So now that we know that, now we'll turn our attention to the right triangle on the floor, the right triangle on the xy plane, this one right here. The hypotenuse of this triangle is that double projection, that 69.3. And if we're focusing on this 40 degree angle, the adjacent will be the x component, and the opposite will be the y component. So we can get the x and y components by doing cosine and sine. So the cosine of that 40 degrees will equal the adjacent of that 40, which is the x component, over that double projection, the 69.3. That's that DP. And you get 53.1 pounds. And to find the Y, you sine. The sine of that 40 degrees is equal to the opposite of that 40, which is the Y component in this case, over that hypotenuse of that double projection. we'll get 44.5 pounds there. So now we can write the full, the vector, this force vector in vector form. This force F1 has an x component of 53.1 I hat. It has a y component of 44.5 J hat. And the z component a 40 k hat. And that's that.
So I highly recommend if you're dealing with a double projection method for you know giving the the direction of a 3D vector, just step through the trig of it. Just make sure you focus on those right triangles. And that will allow you to figure out the components. You know, regardless of where the angles are and stuff like this. Yeah, I would definitely do not memorize this. I, I don't even use this at all. I just step through the trigonometry, the right triangles, and it gets me those components every time.